talk to them about that. All right? Oh, no, I got – they're very brief. <sighs> okay. But there's three. There are three different subjects. Um, <laughs> what I guarantee you they'll be brief. One on Yemen. Um, the Secretary seemed to hint last week in one of his events that there might be a, uh, an, another kind of broad meeting coming up soon to talk about the situation in Yemen. Is that is anything happening with that, or did I mishear or misunderstand? I, that I don't. I, I don't know that. I don't know that you misunderstood. I can go back and look at uh, and see what he said. Uh, obviously. We continue to watch the situation there very closely. I don't have any additional meetings to, right. to read out or to announce. Um, okay, secondly, on Iran, um, two things. <clears throat> One, I don't know if you saw the comments that uh, President Rouhani made about the election here. I did not. He said that there was a choice between bad and worse and asked Iranians if they wanted the kind of democracy that the United States has that has produced this current election. you have anything to say about that? No, I don't. But, you know, back on – if I could, on Yemen, I do want to make a point. I know this wasn't your question, but, um, but I do want to make a point that, uh, uh, that uh, you know, again, we're watching the situation uh, very, very closely. We want to con – we continue to urge all sides to abide by and extend the renewable 72-hour cessation of hostilities and to refrain from acts that will further escalate the situation in Yemen. Uh, this extension, we believe, will create the space necessary for progress toward a political, salute, uh, political settlement in Yemen. Um, and we call upon all parties to renew and adhere to their publicly stated commitments. Uh, this cessation, that if it's given time to hold, uh, will allow urgently needed humanitarian aid to be delivered to all Yemenis, uh, including in difficult places like Taiz and uh, Sadaya. So um, I know that wasn't what you asked, but I thought it was important to, to lay out there that we are watching this closely and want to see this uh, uh, cessation of hostility. Sorry, you had a third? Uh, no, no, this is still part of my second. Uh, it so also has to do with Iran. Set question two, part C or part D? Yeah. You got, a, you got an issue with that? No. No, no. no. I, I just wondered I, if you had seen – They're not quick, though. You said they were quick. I, I'm going quickly. You're the one who keeps making them longer. Uh, Secretary Kerry and uh, former Mr. Zarif are, have been uh, awarded the Chatham House Prize for – Including the Iran nuclear deal? You have yes. Any comment about that? Well, the, the, uh, yes, they have been. Um, and as you know, after almost two years of negotiation, we were able to conclude this joint comprehensive plan of action with Iran. Uh, the Secretary is grateful uh, for uh, being selected uh, uh, to, uh, for, this, for this prize. Uh, and I think he'd be the first to tell you that, uh, that it was very much. A team effort, a team effort internationally, uh, with the other members of the P5 plus one, as well as the EU. Uh, well, the EU was one of the uh, five, and uh, and then inside the interagency, a real team effort, uh, particularly with the Secretary of Energy. Uh, so, um, lots of hard work all the way around. And I, again, I think the Secretary would be the first to say that. Uh, uh, that it absolutely was a, a team approach. Right, but I, I was getting more, more to the uh, – my question is more about whether it's – does the Secretary think that uh, it is appropriate now at this stage where the deal is still being implemented, where there's still complaints that from the Iranian side that it hasn't been implemented, and still criticism in the United States that you guys – that you gave away so too much for too little – that uh, whether the, it's a, the timing of such a, this, this award is uh, Well, is, I mean, is not, not that the Secretary nor Foreign Minister Zarif had any control over the timing of it. No, I'm, I know. And, I'm not saying and that they did. I I'm just wondering he, if, he, if he's comfortable accepting this award given where we are with the – I think he's comfortable accepting it on behalf of the whole team that was involved in it. And uh, I think the Secretary would take issue with the continued criticism about the fact uh, – about the degree to which the deal – makes the region and the United States safer. He believes it does. About uh, the degree to which Iran is complying with their commitments, thus far they have been, and so have we. Uh, and that, uh, you know, that while the, while the relationship with Iran is far from perfect, uh, and they still continue to be a state sponsor of terrorism and conduct provocative and uh, destabilizing activities in the region, uh, that doesn't 
take away from the fact that the deal itself re removes uh, one significant uh, destabilizer in the region, which would be an Iran with nuclear weapons. So, um, look, the Secretary wasn't seeking this award. He's grateful and, uh, and thankful that, uh, uh, that he's been selected for it. Uh, uh, more, more critically, um, he will accept it on behalf of everybody who worked on this uh, in the United States government. And number two, he's much more focused on making sure that we continue to meet our commitments uh, to the deal going forward uh, because he, he uh, earnestly believes uh, that the JCPOA does make the region safer and does make the American people safer. Uh, and then the third issue is Egypt. And I had asked last week when Mark was up there about this American citizen, Aya Hajazi, who has um, been held now for 900 days, I believe. Um, <clears throat> Mark, when he uh, spoke to the, my question, called for a due process and a speedy trial. But And, and my response to him was that it, it's been 900 days. Um, it doesn't seem so speedy. Why aren't you calling for her immediate release? Is that something that you would care to revisit? Well, I would say, one, we cer certainly remain uh, very, very concerned about uh, Aya Hajazi's continued detention in Egypt. Um, as you rightly pointed out, you know, more than two years after she was first ar arrested, she has neither been convicted nor set free. Uh, and while we have repeatedly called, I think as Mark alluded to, an appropriate judicial process, uh, we believe the case has been delayed uh, way too long. Uh, and so we join in others. We join others in calling for a prompt resolution to her case and for her immediate release. I'd also note that we're providing all consular, all possible consular assistance to Ms. Hajazi. We meet with her frequently. The most recent visit was on the 11th of October where we attended her last court hearing, and we uh, have every intention of attending upcoming hearings as well. Okay. Well, so for, can you, do you know, do, do, how long have you been telling the Egyptians that you, that she should be released immediately and that they should stop the, uh, what you I, I, seem to say is a, is a pretense of, uh, you, you seem to say that you say the delay in her legal hearings are, are is, um, is not good and it's right. unacceptable. So when did that, when did you reach the determination that? I, I think we've been from the outset conveying our concerns about uh, about the appropriate judicial process in her case. Um, and uh, I don't have a date certain to tell you, you know, when on the calendar we, we said, okay, well, the delay now is, is gone on too long. We, we, from the very beginning, we've expressed concern to Egyptian authorities about her case uh, and continue to do that as the delays have continued to, to mount up. Okay, Thank thanks you. everybody.